What is this project missing? A lot of things, but what I had in mind was text. Currently, this is the source file for our app. We initialize the window, we clear the screen, and we do absolutely nothing else. Thankfully, Raylib provides a very easy interface to get started with drawing text. First, we have a basic draw text function. We can pass in some static text, an X and Y position, a font size, and the color of the text that we want. This will just use the default Raylib font, but it's the quickest way to get drawing text. The X and Y values are gonna specify the top left corner from which we start drawing text, which means all of the pixels of the text should appear to the right and below these numbers. The font size is gonna be the height in pixels of the text. Quick F6 in a build, and there we have it, our sample text. It's kind of a small font size. It's a short message, so I can get away with making it 100. Of course, it would be nicer if I could draw this text directly in the middle of the screen. My width and my height are 1024, but I don't like magic numbers. If I want to draw something at the middle of the screen, I just need to use half the width and half the height. But of course, this is where we draw the top left corner of the text, and so the text is not going to appear right in the middle of the screen. If this is the middle of the screen here, then what I really need to do is consider the bounding box that is the text, and I need to take this bounding box and move it over half the width of the text and half the height of the text, and that should place it right in the middle. Thankfully, this is trivial with measure text. We pass in the text that we're going to draw and the size we're going to draw it, and this will assume that we're gonna use the default font, which is true for draw text, and it's gonna tell us the width in pixels of the drawn text. I said I don't like magic numbers, I don't like magic strings either. This might seem pedantic, but you'll understand why it's important when you spend 30 minutes trying to figure out why something's broken and you realize it's because it was 100 here and it was 90 here. Once we get the text width from measure text, all we need to do is take the position that we intend to draw it at and subtract half of the text width. For the Y position, we need to use the height of the text, but we know the height of the text will be font size. But maybe I have a custom font file and I want to use that instead. It doesn't matter whether it's installed on your local Windows, we need to be able to load the font from a file. I'll copy the name of this file because we're going to need to use it. Load font just needs the file name and it will return a font object. We can make sure that the font is loaded correctly with is font valid. Realistically, the most that I could do is log that the font didn't load properly, but load font already does this. In your app, maybe you have the user supplying a font and you want to have some branching logic if it fails, for instance, to use a fallback that is a known good one. In my case, I don't need to validate the font. Now that we've loaded the font, we're going to need to pivot to draw text X. This will actually allow us to provide a custom font. It also takes the position in a vector 2 instead of a pair of ints, and it allows us to specify a spacing value. Use trial and error, find something that looks good for your custom font. I start with 1.0 and add a little bit more if the letters are too close, add a little bit less if they're too far. There's my updated draw text line, so this should use the custom loaded font, but it should appear in the same size and in the center of the screen. Okay, well, it's not a very clear font compared to what the default font looked like, and I know that the font can look good at this size, so that's a bit strange. The other issue is it's clearly not in the middle of the screen anymore. It's not in the middle of the screen because measure text, as clearly marked in its definition, assumes that we use the default font. We need to use measure text X, which allows us to provide a custom font and specify the spacing that we're going to use when we draw it. Because the default measure text assumes default font and the default font is known, measure text doesn't need to provide the height for the drawn text because we know the height of the font. But the font that you load, the glyphs may be a different size. And so measure text X is going to give us a vector 2, which is actually going to define the width and the height of the drawn text. And of course, now I've got magic numbers. For the returned vector 2, the x component will represent the width of the drawn text, and the y component will represent the height of the drawn text. All right, let's try again. Okay, now it's in the center. As for the crispness of the text, it's still not desirable. 
in the R text module, we also have a load font X, which will allow us to specify the font size as well as the code points and the code point count. Part of the problem is what's code points? What's code point count? I just want to use a new font. Don't worry about it. If you use null for code points and zero for code point count, it's going to load default characters based on what's already specified here. To get our font looking right, we're going to need to use load font X. I'm going to specify the font size and I'm just going to give null and zero for these other fields since I'm happy to just load whatever the default character set happens to be. This is a bit of a funny error. When you're developing in C, null is not an implicit part of the language. So sometimes you will have a concern like this, error null undeclared. One of your options is to simply include standard library.h, and this will actually include the null macro. Alternatively, you could just define null to be zero if you really like using it. And perhaps the most important workaround of all, you can just use the number zero. Sometimes it may be more appropriate to explicitly cast the zero to avoid pointer, but in this case, zero is absolutely fine. Okay, now we have the text that we were expecting. It's in the center and it's drawing nice and crisp. And of course, the way we've set all this up is I can change the font size, run the program again, and it'll still look crisp because we're loading the font at the appropriate size. There's still more ways to draw text in Rayla. We also have a Draw Text Pro, the definition of which is long enough that it needs to wrap on my screen. So the only major difference between Draw Text X and Pro is the ability to rotate. The origin is going to specify what point around which we will be rotating the text. If I use vector 2, 0 as the origin, it's going to rotate about the top left point of the text, which is especially awkward considering the text is supposed to be in the middle of the screen. If I want it to rotate around the middle of the text, then I need a vector that represents the middle of the text. Thankfully, we already computed the text size with measure text x. So what I really want now is a text origin, which specifies what the middle of the size is. For this kind of thing, I like to use RayMath. If you're not familiar, you can find it in the same directory that your RayLibH is. RayMath is a simple math library that we can use to work with the types provided by RayLib. For example, vector2 scale, in this case, I can use to basically divide the x and the y component both by 2 at the same time. Now that we've specified the text origin to be the middle of the text, we should see the spinning we expect. What's happening now is the origin of the text is the middle of the text and we're drawing the text from the middle of the screen. So the origin is being taken into account when deciding the position of the text and it's trying to account for something we've already accounted for. To fix this, we actually now need to update our text position to actually just be the middle of the screen because our origin is what's going to do the offset. There we have it. Our text is in the middle of the screen and it's spinning. Once you've got your custom font loading and you know where you want to draw the text, it's just a matter of finding fun ways to drive the parameters for these functions. Just a few notes about drawing text in Raylib. There is no officially supported way to draw multi-line text, so use the values from measure text x and some basic text parsing code that you will have to write yourself to determine where to split the lines, how to draw the different lines, as far as uh, multi-line blocks and text alignment. These are all things you're going to have to be a little bit creative and implement for yourself. But Believe me, it's a boon that it's not included by default because if your project doesn't need any of that stuff, then you're saving quite a bit on complexity for drawing the text. If you want to do more advanced text manipulation than what you're seeing here, or perhaps you want to draw text in 3D, those are going to be separate topics that I will cover later on down the road. In the meantime, I hope you enjoyed and thanks for watching.